Hello and welcome to the beginner course to C sharp. And yes, I emphasize beginner because this course is going to be jam packed with silly visuals, funny examples, funny stories, as well as clear and concise explanations for all of C sharp's concepts. But first, why do we actually code C sharp? We code C sharp for that sweet, sweet code money. Enough said. Here's how this course is going to work. First things first, we are going to install Visual Studio. Next thing, we are going to install Visual Studio Code. Why are we going to do this? Visual Studio is a more advanced IDE that is going to include everything that you need. But we are going to actually use VS Code in this course because it is cross-platform and it is a lot easier to use compared to Visual Studio. So feel free to use it if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead, hop into a browser really quick and we're gonna start downloading. So the first place that you want to go is you want to type in Visual Studio into the Google search bar. Once you type in Visual Studio, go to the visualstudio.microsoft.com. Be careful of installing software through non-Microsoft websites. Next, you're going to be brought to a page that looks like this. You'll be, uh, I guess, enticed to either install Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. We're going to install regular Visual Studio. You do not want professional, you do not want enterprise unless somebody else is paying for it. If somebody else is paying for it, by all means, use it. Next thing that's gonna happen is a little screen's gonna pop up. My screen's going dark because it's trying to get admin privileges and the Microsoft installer is going to be brought up. It will look a lot like this. It's going to say downloaded, installed, and you will be brought to a page that looks exactly like this. You want to install ASP.NET and web development and Azure development. Um, I would recommend not installing Python or Node through Visual Studio because it messes up a lot for some reason. You could also install other stuff down here if you're interested, but I'm just going to install ASP.NET and Azure just for this case. So just go ahead, click the install button, and that's it. You're pretty much good to go. You'll have Visual Studio installed right after that. The next place that you want to go is you want to go back to Google and type in VS Code into the Google search bar. Once you type in Vis Visual Studio Code, go to code.visualstudio.com and make sure that you're going to the right links because like I said, there's a lot of malware out there and you wanna make sure that you're installing something that does not contain malware. So once you actually click for the Visual Studio uh, um, installer to start up you're going to get something like this say I accept the agreement go ahead click all those right there go ahead click install and you're pretty much good to go so after everything is installed you probably want to restart your computer I guess you don't have to but it's it's a good idea so I've went ahead restarted my computer I'm on a fresh install this is a brand new PC and I'm just going to go through and install all of my favorite extensions for C Sharp and as well the required ones. I'll make the distinction if it's optional or not. The C Sharp Dev Kit, you definitely want to install the C Sharp Dev, Dev Kit. This is required if you want IntelliSense, if you want um, linting and you want a lot of the support for helping you code and detecting errors, you definitely want the C Sharp Dev Kit. Next is going to be C Sharp Extensions. This is not required, but it does give you a nice little uh, snippet or it provides you with nice little snippets so that you don't have to type out all of your C-sharp classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Also, I am going to install a new theme. I think this theme looks uh, bad, so I'm gonna give myself new icons and I'm also going to install the Night Owl theme as well too. So I'm gonna also just put in Night Owl. And this is totally a, uh, the optional you do not have to have the night owl theme if you don't want to so now that we've got all the extensions ready let's go ahead and let's actually install our very first .NET console app so while we are in vs code let's go ahead into this button right here find where it says open folder if you don't have this displaying go to the file and go down and go to open folder create just a um, junk folder. You could call this whatever, but I'm just going to call this repo and this is where I'm going to keep all of my code. You could have whatever folder structure that you want to, but the main thing is is that we're going to create a new 
file and we're going to call it console app just like this and we're going to go ahead and we're going to select this folder we are going to go inside of it go ahead trust all the authors we are the authors um, you want to have console app right here so we are getting ready to build a console application and all a console application is is a text-based program Think a computer program from the 1980s. No fancy visuals, no mobile development, no web, literally just text space. And the way that we're gonna do that is we are going to type in .NET new console into Visual Studio Code. Where are we going to type it though? We're going to type it within the terminal. So if you do not have this terminal in the bottom part of your VS Code, press Control tilde and this will bring up the terminal. You can also bring it up right here. You can click new terminal and it will bring up a new terminal. And all that you want to do is just type in .NET new console into the uh, terminal. So once you actually type this in, you are going to see three things pop up to the left. You're going to see obj. All objects is the DLLs or where the actual project is going to be housed, the actual code that Microsoft is going to run. You're not actually going to mess with this folder that much. The CS proj is going to be where all of your project is stored together. Think of it as almost like these settings. You're going to have things like the target framework, we're in .NET 8. You can also put global settings that you want. You can add settings and you can use some of Microsoft's settings that they provide to you. You can also install these things called NuGet packages, which are going to be very similar to NPM packages if you come from the JavaScript world. Finally, we're going to be presented with a program.cs. Now this is kind of cliche, it is corny, but we are going to create our very first Hello World program. It's actually already created for you. You could just go through here and type out the console right line, but since it's already created for us, we'll just count it as a give me. We'll go ahead and run the program and we'll call it a day. How do we actually run the program? Well, let's go back down here and you'll start to notice a trend. We typed in .NET new console before, but now we can type in things like .NET run, and then .NET is going to do everything for us. It's pretty much having the green, if you're familiar with Visual Studio, this is the green button, this is the green arrow. And once you type in .NET run, it's going to build everything for you, and our program is going to run. But there's one thing that you can do to make your life a lot easier. You can type in .NET watch run. And whenever there is a change to the folder or whenever there's a change to the actual code that you write, like say if I wanted to add an extra hello world here, you can add an extra exclamation marks here if you want to emphasize it a little bit more. And each time that you change the, or each time that you save, I should say, it's going to reload the program and run the program for you. It's very nifty and it helps you save a lot of time. But that's pretty much it. We finally got Hello World. We finally got .NET set up. We can finally move on to bigger and better things. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.